All right, you guys, this is Ross. We have a, a pretty nice fig harvest today. Um, I don't know how much of this is gonna be edible um, <laughs> in the sense that um, it's not fermented, but I have really quite a few varieties here. And I figure this is a really good selection, good variety of varieties. Um, that we should document this. And I finally just been getting enough time to go around um, the orchard, the in-ground figs, the potted figs, and actually pick all the figs. I've just legitimately have not had time. And because of that, um, I found some dried figs. I found quite a few actually yesterday. Um, I found one today that I missed. And just overall, um, we're getting over that hump now. We're getting over that hump of the spotted wing drosophilia. It's kind of starting to go away. We have our bucket filled with fermenting fruits, filled with water and soap. And that actually um, does help lower the numbers, I find. Um, also, if you can really stay on top of whatever is fermenting in your yard and you're not leaving it out, you're not letting it ferment in your yard, um, the numbers will just dramatically dwindle if you keep the, the fallen fruit under control, you keep everything clean, you won't have nearly as many issues. I still have to pick the raspberries, but I've got some tomatoes here that pretty much were, uh, some of them probably had fermented or were close to fermenting. We have a, a really a big harvest here of cucumbers and um, I've got some eggplants and peppers and tons of tomatoes. I, I ripped out all the cucumbers because uh, they're finished at this point. A lot of the uh, cucurbit family is pretty much done. I did harvest the melon today and some of the melons are going to keep going uh, in the melon patch and those will probably be the last thing I pull and I can probably expect maybe five or six melons left out of that that little patch there but for the most part a lot of these things are now finished and um, I only put this right there because the, the glare on the table is, is pretty bad but Let's, let's focus on the figs for this, this video here. We have uh, Rosalino. We have uh, a new one for me this year. Um, this one's called Negretta. Um, I have La Magdalene. This is the first La Magdalene of the year. We have uh, a few of the Neruccio de Elba. We got some Baccarino. We have uh, Paradiso from Bode. We have, this is I believe a Ron de Bordeaux. Believe it or not, looks very similar to Negretta, exterior-wise and shape-wise. This is a, this is a Blue Celeste. This is a Grise de Saint Jean um, from a European source. And it's from a very, young cutting and unfortunately it's probably not going to be all that good. This is an Azores Dark. This is a um, uh, Black Province. It's a Vila de Bordeaux type. We have a dried Moro de Caneva that's likely fermented and then I have a fig here that I'm quite excited about but I have a feeling it is also fermented. Maybe not. This one is called Martinenka. And this is just, uh, I'm sorry, this is Martinenka Blanca. So this is a white version of Martinenka. There's Martinenka Ramada, there's just regular Martinenka. Uh, I don't know how similar the uh, Blanca is. We're going to find out. This is from a rooted cutting I rooted this winter. So. <laughs> the quality probably isn't up to the standard it should be, but uh, this is the only one I'm going to get this year that's left. And it does, I have a feeling it's fermented, I, even though I can't can't really smell it, smell that fermentation. The uh, Neruccio de Elba, without a doubt, is probably the best one here today, um, just in the sense that it's pretty much indestructible. It's going to get you a reliable fig. Um, some of these are starting to dry up. 
believe it or not. And I'll cut one open. Show you the inside. We did um, a review of this variety last year. Um, it's not often. Hmm, it's going to be tough to get, get the lighting right on this this video here, guys. Well, how about we do this? We'll, sh we'll cut them all open and we'll show you guys the inside. But it's a very small fig. Talked a lot about this variety. Let's cut some more of these guys open for you guys and show them. Um, I imagine the Rosalino is probably the tastiest of today. Let's cut this one open. Yeah, that looks real good. Not a bad looking fig there. Let's see what the little Magdalene looks like. It's not perfectly ripe. Yeah, but it's respectable for the first fig off of the tree uh, this year. It's quite an interesting honey fig, I, I find. Um, I also find that it looks visually very similar to Campaneri. Obviously very different, but um, from the outside, you'd never know that it wasn't or was Campaneri. Here's Negretta. This is a favorite of uh, a lot of short season growers. A fig from Italy that uh, really I don't remember too many details of its, of its origin. I just know that it came from originally uh, Sergio. Here we have Ron de Bordeaux and definitely a little underripe, but um, you know, as it is right now, I'm picking figs as many as I can right now to avoid some of the SWD. <laughs> Um, to lower the numbers as much as I can. I did pick three Ronde Bordeaux yesterday off an in-ground tree that was completely uh, dried up. They were just fig bombs, man. They were so, so good. Really underrated variety sometimes in terms of its flavor. And it has a decent drying capability. It's not going to dry all the way like you know, Rucciola de Elba or something like that. But this is the Blue Celeste. If I can get the camera. To act properly here. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful fig. Um... <laughs> Some of these, for whatever reason, are just not perfectly ripe. Weird, I don't know, weird ripening that some of these are going through. Here's an Azores Dark off of a, uh, a younger tree I have. Actually looks real good. And I've, I've had some hardy Chicago types this year from other varieties, different varieties that I that I'm growing to, you know, just, just trial them and see if they can beat Azores Dark. And so far, none of them come close. And I've had them for a uh, number of years now. This is a uh, Grease de Saint Jean from a European source. Um, what's interesting about this one, at least the outside, is definitely gray. But it's, I think it's gonna be a more of a smaller Grease de Saint Jean. And more true to what Grease de St. Jean should be. Here's a really strange black province that, uh, I don't know, it's just weird. This fig is um, a Vila de Bordeaux type, oddly enough, but at least in its younger years and maybe forever, I don't know. It's going to have an amber pulp, but it tastes just like a Viola de Bordeaux. It's really strange. I got that one from my buddy Bill, Big Bill. 
Here's a baccarino. This is one of the better baccarinos I've harvested this year. Not really a big fan of that variety. Talked about it in other videos. Here's probably the last Paradiso from Bode that I'll harvest this year. This one's a, a five out of five. Really, really tasty fig. All right, let's do the Martinenka Blanca and the uh, Moro de Caneva. I have a feeling they're fermented, so I'm gonna do them last. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Look, I don't think it's fermented, guys. What a weird looking fig. And you know what? It's gonna be weird at first. It's a young tree. You can't really expect much from these young trees. You can't properly evaluate their flavors. It's just, unless you really starve them of water on a young tree, which I don't necessarily recommend, you know, it's just not going to, uh, it's not gonna put out high fruit quality for you. Well, it looks like half of this fig did spoil, the other half did not. You can see that the bottom part looks spoiled, whereas the top does not. And uh, if I can get something out of that, that'd be great, because that is a really, really tasty variety, guys. All right. Let's do the tasting now. So we do have some pretty decent results here. Not the best quality. I would say the quality today is below average. Um, you know, I, I would say if I could get really dry weather, no issues, no birds, no squirrels, you know, the quality is going to be really high. Um, on an average day, this is pr this is probably slightly below average. This is this is what the fruits sort of look like if something's not right. You know, the soil moisture's not right, something's going on, the climate isn't that great. Whatever. Some of these varieties, though, do look pretty good. Um, you know, each of these figs has their own little issue, it seems like. Um, none of them are really perfect. I hope you guys can see my head. It's so sunny out here um, right now. But, you know, that's the thing with these, is that they all have their own little issue. And it, it, that one little issue is preventing them from doing, from being great, at least in this particular moment. And, um, you know, if you get everything right, you get everything perfect, you're solid. But if you can't do that, you're going to struggle. Let's try the Blue Celeste. It's become one of my favorites this year. good it didn't ripen properly as I thought but it's still got figgy flavor it's sweet um, and that's mostly it there's not a whole lot of berry in that one let's try the uh, Negretta what's interesting about Negretta is it has a weird pulp to it it's it's like uh, half amber and half red um, and it's been like that for a long time um, that's a really easy way to distinguish it. At the bottom is more red, um, and as it ripens, it, it turns more red, but it starts out as an amber. This is one of the earliest varieties that you can grow. It is among the earliest for sure, and I'd highly recommend it for people in shorter seasons. That's a good fig. Um, not a whole lot of difference there kind of figgy sweet reminds me a lot of like uh, Ronde Bordeaux in a way let's try Ronde Bordeaux except Ronde Bordeaux has got more of a resiny flavor to it this particular one isn't perfectly ripe and it's kind of got some of that uh, that sap the latex flavor Let's try Azores Dark.
Well, it's actually really good. It's slightly acidic, and I thought, oh, maybe it's fermenting. But I don't think it is. Um, really thick. It's quite a good fig, guys, even after, even on a young tree as it is. I think it's uh, a two or three year old air layer at this point. It's really good. Better than any of the hardy Chicago types I've had, um, period. Let's just try this Grease de Saint Jean. It's not going to be good. I know that going in. Let's just, yeah. Flavorless. We, we, I don't know. Why am I wasting my time? I don't even think I want to waste my time with this Black Province. Yeah, just not ripening properly. You know, um, and they're just young trees. You know, it's just something's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to get certain figs on the tree that are just not ripening correctly. Um, just because it's young, you know. Let's try the La Magdalene. Very melony. Not right. But, you know, it's a fig. It's not that bad. Not the worst. Let's try the Nerucciola de Elba. Mmm. That's good. A little bitter. The skin on Elba, Nerucciola de Elba, um, is a little bitter sometimes. All right, let's try the Baccarino. Portuguese fig, early, quite productive. Yeah, quite fruity. Now, there, there is some potential there. Um, it's just that it, for this climate, I think, it's just not going to have that full, full effect. I think it could do a lot better in someone else's yard over a, a longer period of time. Um, but it's just not a fig I think that's worth, worth its grain and salt here, but if that makes any sense. But uh, it is actually a pretty decently productive and early variety that uh, you could justify it here for that reason. Here's the Rosalino, which is probably the best fig here on this plate. This one really impressed me in our last tasting that we did on Wednesday. Yeah. That one's really good. Nice and thick, dense. This has got an elegant berry flavor to it. That's a high quality fruit. High quality piece of fruit right there. All right, let's try the Paradiso. Huh. A little watery this time. Not as impressed as I usually am. It's not as dense. A little watered down flavor. Obviously not perfectly ripe. Just because this fig is impossible to get perfectly ripe here for the most part. It splits quite frequently. All right, let's try this uh, Martinenka Blanca. We have the guts. I think it's all right, really. I'm surprised to see that there's so many sugar spots on this. It, you know, it is yellow on the outside, but on the bottom, it basically has turned black because um, of the sugar spots. It's really quite brown. Pretty good fig. That's pretty darn good. Hmm. You know, for a young tree that I rooted, that's you can't you can't complain about that quality. You could tell that's gonna be a really good fig one day. You know? 
it's got that potential there in the flavor. That's an impressive one, I have to say. I was surprised it also didn't split. It doesn't have any cracks in it. And, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well considering the environment uh, right now. So that's a nice little plus for that little variety there. Now this one, yeah, this more they can have is definitely spoiled here towards the bottom. But the rest of this, I don't know if I'm going to regret it or not, but it's either going to be the best fig or the worst fig. What do you guys think? I'm personally leaning towards, man, it's so hard to pick it up in the smell. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's real good. I have uh, quite a few of those trees now of the Moro de Caneva. And they are starting to come in. Um, all the trees now are starting to ripen for the most part. Actually, my in-ground trees are ahead of my potted trees, but the potted trees are just not as advanced um, because they've spent so much time here in the ground now. And I should get a pretty good amount of figs off of the in-ground trees, believe it or not. Um, some of these in-ground trees are doing really well considering some of the issues I've had this year. Um, anyway, that was this little harvest today. There's quite a few here that are worth eating, some that are just not. And the, the ones that are not worth eating I think are definitely worth processing. So I'm going to save them, freeze them, make them into jam. Um, if not, these would probably go well on a pizza. Uh, or they would go really well, maybe wrapped in some bacon or something. But uh, in terms of fresh eating, there's probably only a, a handful of these that are really worth eating fresh. Um, I would say probably, at least just on this plate today, the uh, Nerucciola de Elba, the uh, Martinenca Blanca, Rosalino, Azores Dark, the uh, Negretta, and also the Blue Celeste are definitely worth eating. And of course, the uh, Moro de Caneva, that was, it's a miracle we even got something out of it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much here for watching this video with me. Um, I hope that you guys will check out our blog, figboss.com. We have all kinds of fig-related information there, really trying to push you guys over there and uh, just check it out. There's a lot of good information. So we'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. I hope you guys are getting some nice figs at this point. Uh, we'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.